Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of Major League Baseball's greatest hits. I'm George Grant. For the next few minutes, in conjunction with Major League Baseball Productions, we're going to be taking a look back to the year 1977 and the World Series. It was a year when the Yankees beat the Kansas City Royals in the American League Championship Series, and the Dodgers beat the Philadelphia Phils. Kurt Gotti will pick it up when we return. The Yankees and the Dodgers in the 77 World Series. This ESPN program is being brought to you by McDonald's. It's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. On the road, nobody can get you a great hot meal faster than McDonald's. And I figured out how they do it. Ginny calls Signal, sends Carl deep for a Big Mac, and cuts inside for your coat. Look at him fly. Back here, you got Joel putting the moves on a Big Mac. Doink, doink. Now Carl hands off to Beth and clears the lane. This team's got it together. See what I mean? It all ends with a pass to you. Hot and fast. You get it hot, you get it fast. Want to see it again? Drive on in. At McDonald's. When you've got the hottest trucks in America, you don't need gimmicks. All you need is the hottest deal in America. And Nissan's got it. 5.7% annual percentage rate factory-sponsored financing on every Nissan hard-body truck. That's the lowest anywhere. 5.7%. You could save $829 on this hard-body regular bed and up to $1,980 on this King Cab 4x4. So talk to your participating Nissan dealer today. Who says you need gimmicks to sell a great truck? The name is Nissan. Give me a light. That's not correct, Steve. Don't just ask for a light here. Come on, give me a light. You asked for it, Steve. Oh, oh, Bud Light! Yes, Steve, Bud Light. The light beer with the first name and taste. Don't just ask for a light. Bud Light, because everything else is just a light, Steve. Monday, ESPN salutes baseball's greatest all-stars live from Houston. You'll see the biggest hitters, the strongest pitchers, and the most popular ballpark figures. ESPN's live all-star salute following the National Old-Timers Classic Monday starting at 7.30 Eastern. The first series between the Yankees and the Dodgers since 1963 began to the outgoing Tom Lasorda and firing Billy Martin in refurbished Yankee Stadium. It would be the first series for the exuberant Lasorda, but for Martin, after a season of trials, then triumphs, a series win could mean final vindication for both the Yankees and their beleaguered manager. Commissioner Kuhn joins the capacity crowd in applause as the first ball is thrown out by Whitey Ford, a Yankee legend in his own right. The opening game had two winning World Series veterans facing each other. The Dodgers' Don Sutton against the Yankees' Don Gullett. Los Angeles jumped on the ex-Cincinnati left-hander for two quick first-inning runs. It was a game of might have been and tantalizing if only. For instance, if only Steve Garvey and Reggie Smith had not misfired on a hit-and-run play with no outs, the Dodgers might have run up a formidable lead in the very first inning. Or if only Steve Garvey had not hesitated between first and second on Glenn Burke's hit in the sixth, he might not have been out on a controversial play at home, and the Dodgers could have won game one in regulation time. Some speculated that umpire Nestor Shylock was too far up the first base line to make the definitive call. In any event, it was close. Very close. Conversely, with Manny Mota pinch hitting for Glenn Burke in the ninth, the Dodgers get caught once again on an unsuccessful hit and run play. Now, if only Yankee first baseman Chris Shambliss had not just barely missed a caught off first Dusty Baker, the Dodgers might never have deadlocked the game three all and sent it into extra innings. Then if only Lee Lacey, pinch hitting in the ninth against the otherwise first race Sparky Lyle, had not smashed the ace reliever's first pitch to send Baker home with a tying run, the Yankees would have won it in regulation time. 
instead of going into extra innings all tied at three each. Now, if only the Yankees had been able to sacrifice runners in the scoring position in either the 10th or 11th inning, the game might never have reached the 12th. But Jerry Grody gunned down both potential go-ahead runners impressively. Then came the final irony of all. Paul Blair came up with two on and no outs in the bottom of the 12th. If only Blair, normally an adept bunner, had not failed twice to advance the runners, he never would have had the chance to be the man of the hour. The hero, whose sharp single past the shortstop, would drive in Randolph to win the first game for the Yankees 4-3. Blair was the final hero in this bizarre first game. Other Warriors are foremost in the fans' thoughts as the Yankees and Dodgers prepare for game two. Don't you be intimidating. I'm not intimidating. Don't you be intimidating. I'm not intimidating. As far as I'm concerned, he went enough. Fresh to you, Del Taco Fresh. Taco salad fresh to you. Tacos, taco salad, made with the finest fresh vegetables, grated cheese, and seasoned ground beef. Del Taco, fresh to you. Taco salad, fresh to you. Now at Del Taco. The Jeep Comanche from Al Reese Jeep Renault is making heads turn all around the Metroplex, and no wonder. With the choice of two-wheel or four-wheel drive, plus the most powerful standard four-cylinder engine in its class, the Comanche can take whatever you dish out. Better yet, Al Reese sweetens the deal with $1,000 rebates on select models. The great Comanche plus a $1,000 rebate. It's all for you from Al Reese Jeep Renault, 200 West Spring Valley. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Give me a light. Ah, uh, Bud Light. Thanks. So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. I can have a light. Bud Light. Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Saturday, see boxing history on ESPN. Muhammad Ali becomes the first heavyweight to win the world championship three times in a rematch with Leon Spink, the man who took his title away. You'll see why Ali is the greatest. Superbox, Saturday night on ESPN. Both teams will start pitchers who rely on pinpoint control. One of them has suffered through a year of frustration and chronic injury. The fact is that Jim Catfish Hunter has not pitched in more than a month. Ron Say drives in two with a moonshot in the first. Then in the second, again with two outs, Steve Yeager digs in. Another high slider disappears to the great beyond in the left field seat. Guess who's just crazy about it? Mrs. Steve Yeager. With one on, one out in the third, a 31-year-old North Carolina farmer knows he must keep the ball down to this man. As one of four Dodgers with 30 or more home runs, Reggie Smith can zing you. Low and outside, just where Catfish wanted it. So when Smith turns his best pitch into a 400-foot home run, it's time to acknowledge that the former Cy Young winner has had it for the night. Where Catfish Hunter failed, Burt Hooten succeeded by serving up a recipe that had the Yankee hitters lunging at his assortment of fastballs mixed with bewildering knuckle curves. He struck out eight for a 6-1 Dodger win. 
Umpire Ed Sudol found Hooten's menu oh, gave some Yankees acute indigestion. Randolph pleased with Sudol to confirm for the first base umpire that Willie had, in fact, struck out. With the series deadlock, the scene shifts to an L.A. temple. In L.A., the series is a happening for just plain folks and some others that everyone knows. Reggie Jackson said that Mickey Rivers makes us go. He hadn't up to now, and in Tommy John, the Dodgers had one of the great comeback players in sports. It didn't seem to worry Rivers. <laughs> then very little does. Mick the quick whips a curtain-raising double to right before the record Dodger crowd is even fully settled in. Jackson comes up with one out and a man in scoring position, thanks to an opposite field double by Thurman Munson that had already driven Rivers home with the game's first run. Reggie slices a hit, scoring Munson, and when Baker overruns the ball for the first error of the series, Jackson makes it easily to second. Here on enemy turf, a group of Yankee wives hope it's only the beginning. Sweet Lou Pinella obliges, and the Yankees lead 3-0 before the Dodgers can get to bat. The Yankees' Mike Torres squirms out of the first two innings. But in the third, Reggie Smith's on first with the dangerous Steve Garvey at the plate. Decapitation. Almost, anyway as Garvey lines a blistering single to center to put runners on both first and third with two outs. And Torres squirms some more as he coaxes the count to three and two on another potential Dodger howitzer, Dusty Baker. Dodgers takes full flight. Now with a game tied, Tommy John, the Dodgers stopper all season, has his chance. Comes a scratch single. A high bouncer puts a man on third. Another good pitch is bounced to second for a run. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Count goes to one and one on Chamblin. Chris nudges it through the hole. 
Jackson score. And without a really well-hit ball in two innings, the Yankees score twice, and it's 5-3. to three. Ninth inning, reliever Charlie Huff pitches to Paul Blair. Watch Ron Say. Agonizing for Paul Blair. Accolades for Ron Say. A now confident Mike Torres has 10 outs in a row and eight strikeouts as he faces Davey Lopes with two out in the last of the night. Lopes becomes a ninth strikeout victim. And Mike Torres, so instrumental in the Yankees' late season drive, wins another key game, five to three. And the Yankees go ahead in the series two games to one. talked about talk show on TV. And he's the reason this week's People is full of David Letterman. People celebrate people. Starting with the man who's changing our sleeping habits. Then Tony Danza getting married in style. Judge Reinhold and how he worked with Bette Midler in Ruthless People. The Jets, that hot new group with their hot new hit. And much more. Week after week, People celebrates people. This week, David Letterman, off camera. that comes with a victory in West Palm Beach, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. Typical Los Angeles Bluebird weather as the contenders prepare for Game 4. The president's mother, Lillian Carter, an enthusiastic baseball fan with a soft spot for the Dodgers, throws out the first ball and basks in that California warmth. With two out in the bottom of the third, the Yankees' Ron Guidry has set down eight straight. You might expect pitcher Rick Roden would be the ninth. Surprise! A well-hit ball past Tanella becomes a ground rule double, and Dodger fans get an unexpected lift as Roden ambles into second. Dodger second baseman Davey Lopes is 0 for 12 at this point. he's one for 13. Hope become deep, and the Dodgers take heart when their powerful little captain pulls them within a run with six innings yet to go. Bottom of the fourth, and the Yankee left-hander faces the Penguin, the power-hitting Ron Say. Say claps one deep to left field. But the Yankees' Tanella flex the ball right out of home run territory to save Guidry's 3-2 lead. It's only when you see this gem slowed down that it fully sparkles, where Pinella makes the fantastic look easy when he nonchalants it. Like Torres the day before, Ron Guidry gets tougher as the game goes on. gives up with four hits, strikes out seven before it's over. And game four is a harbinger of things to come. But with only two singles in games one, two, and three, Reggie Jackson begins to strut his stuff. With two runs scored, a double, and this 
his first series home run in the sixth that closes out the scoring for both teams. Furthermore, for the first time, Jackson becomes an important factor in a Yankee win. A victory that puts New York ahead three games to one. And for hometown fans, close to ending it all right here in Dodger Stadium. Game five offers the Yankees the unexpected chance to close out the series in Dodger country. But not if Don Sutton, who has never pitched badly in World Series competition, can prevent it. He'll lock horns once again with the Yankees' Don Gullett. Steve Garvey on second in the fourth with a double, and the Dodgers leading one to nothing. Dusty Baker slams the ball to left, and Garvey scores while Pinella there, the first for the Yankees in the series, allows Baker to hustle in the second. Gullet induces Lee Lacey to hit the ball to Nettles, who boots it after making several stunning plays earlier, and everybody's safe. When Steve Yeager idly parks a high gullet fork ball into the left field corner, the rout is on. This is the kind of command these fans have come to expect of their Dodgers. And when Reggie Smith Cruz Dick Tidro in the sixth with a two-run blast. He put the final icing on what has become a daytime nightmare for the Yankees. But more never seemed to be enough for these Dodger Blue loyalists. Not even 10 to nothing. Don Sutton surrenders two Yankee runs in the seventh, plus a two-out homer to Munson in the eighth. Determined to walk no one, Sutton serves up another fat pitch to Jackson, who jumps all over it for a vicious clout high off the foul pole screen and right. But hidden within the recesses of the Yankee debacle is another two for four performance by Reggie Jackson. What is even more significant, Jackson is now getting around in the ball after being late on pitches throughout the series. But who could ever imagine what all this portended? Sutton settles down in the ninth to retire the last three men in order for a 10 to 4 complete game victory. Now, for all the Dodgers and the manager who insists he bleeds Dodger blue, redemption was over 3,000 miles away. Personal best. Brought to you by the U.S. Army. Be all you can be. Olympic silver medalist Michelle Mitchell achieves her personal best with discipline and training. I train six days a week, 11 months of the year, four or five hours a day, plus weights and exercises. But like anything else, a good executive takes his work home. You don't just leave it at the pool or you don't leave it on your desk. And so the discipline is, is the 24-hour affair. For 9 a.m. than most people do all day. Hey, first sergeant. Good morning. Find your future in the army. Just as they did in games one and two, the Dodgers jump ahead two to nothing. Bert Hooten who had collared Reggie Jackson impressively in game two, walked him on four straight pitches to open the Yankees' second. It didn't seem all that significant right then, since Chambliss had not solved Hooten either. But this time he did. Not only check, but checkmate. And so the Yankee long ball hitting that had stirred itself in the burnt ashes of Game 5 
awaits early to tie game six at two all. With only three days rest, and having thrown over 130 pitches in winning game three, the Torres hang on. Reggie Smith seemingly gave the answer with a monster shot deep into the center field bleachers. It's Smith's third series homer and the ninth for the Dodgers against Yankee pitcher. Yankee catcher Thurman Munson leads off the bottom of the third. Munson smacks the pitch sharply for a long single to keep his streak alive with a hit in 10 straight series games. As Hooten tries to calm himself with a critical task ahead, some 56,000 fans here and over 65 million television viewers know that Hooten can't afford to walk Reggie Jackson again. One swing, and Jackson hits it on the line into the right field stand. The Yankees seesaw back into a 4-3 to three lead. The fact that he'd homered in his last two swings in the eighth inning of game five and here in game six was at this point little more than a curiosity. Tom Lasorda was ready for a change. But he wanted to give his bullpen more time. Get you out of here, Happy. Huh? We'll get you out of here. Hello, Tom. Hi, John. How are you? What would you do in this situation if you were managing the ball club, John? You, did, you took this club in first, man. I, know, uh, I got a big decision to make, and I just don't know what to do. I thought maybe time, possibly could help me. Give me a little time. So John, yeah. I got a decision to make, and I just don't know. I thought maybe time, possibly, whatever you think of be best, John, I'll go along with it, because I know you're very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. No. It might not have been enough time, but the Yankees pick up another run, and it's 5-3 in the fifth. Randolph on first, Elias Sosa pitching. With two swings, Jackson has two home runs. Now the crowd's mood shifts, and so does this man as he ponders what elixir he needs to get Reggie Jackson out. And in the eighth, all thoughts are with this bundle of contradictions. Both the man and his potential for the incredible has everyone in his grip. What could Tom Lasorda be thinking? And what could be in reliever Charlie Huff's head? They all await the final chapter for this self-proclaimed Mr. October. Reggie Jackson stamps his name forever into the pages of World Series history. The bottom line, most homers, five. First man to hit three homers in a row in one series game. Most runs, 10. Most total bases, 25. Magic time. The greatest single performance I have ever seen, said Tom Lasorda. These Yankee fans just won't quit. They demand a curtain call. There's no quit in the Dodgers, though. They scratch for a run in the ninth off a of now-tired Mike Torres. But when Torres squeezes Lee Lacey's pop-up, it's all over. The Yankees win it four games to two. So the 1977 World Series was history, and Reggie Jackson would go home with the most valuable player trophy from the 77 series. In conjunction with Major League Baseball production, I'm George Grant. For Kurt Gowdy, thanks for joining us on Major League Baseball's Greatest Hits.